Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I oftentimes get asked by homeowners, what can I as a homeowner do or check on my furnace for furnace maintenance myself? So I sat down and made a list of 10 things that a homeowner can do or check on their own furnace as preventative maintenance. Now, if you don't come down and look at your furnace very often, I would just come down once and just look at your furnace so you know where everything is. So of course, this here is the furnace itself, right? You have the top door to bottom door. You have the vent. It'll be a steel vent. If you have a steel vent, that means you have a chimney. That vent goes out and out the top of your roof. If you have plastic venting, PVC pipes, that means the exhaust. And if you have an intake, sometimes it'll be two pipes. They will go out the side of your wall of the house, not out the roof. And of course your piping, your exhaust piping should be in good condition, especially the steel stuff. If it's all rusted out and stuff. And if you, for example, squeeze on it and your hand goes through it, that's the worst case scenario. That's really bad, but this should be sturdy. Nothing should be rusting or corroding. If it is, then there's a problem. And at that point, it's probably better to just call a HVAC technician and get an actual furnace inspection. But do be careful. If you have this steel pipe for an exhaust, it gets very hot, like 300, 400 degrees. So if your furnace was just running and you grab that like that, you're gonna burn your hand off. So be careful when you grab that pipe, or at least tap on it first to make sure it's not really hot. And most people will also have central air conditioning. And a lot of people don't know this, but actually there's a coil that sits on top of your furnace. If you have an upflow furnace, which is part of your air conditioner, it kind of looks like a letter A and it sits right on top. It's like a big radiator. Here's the drain. There's a drain pan on the bottom of it. Here's a drain line. Usually it'll be a clear hose like this or it'll be PVC, white PVC pipe coming out. Your drain comes out of here, all the humidity that it's pulling out of your house during the summer just runs down into the drain pipe or drain hose and down to your floor drain. And here, wherever you see the copper pipes, the thin copper pipe is always gonna be bare like that, whereas the thick one will have insulation over it. The reason for that is, if there's no insulation, that thick pipe, it will sweat or condense and start to drip. And wherever it's dripping, of course, it'll cause either rust or if it's towards the ceiling, it can, you know, make spots in your ceiling if you have finished ceilings. So these are refrigerant pipes. They run in a loop between your outside unit and your inside unit, which is right here on top of the furnace. So the refrigerant or the Freon just keeps going in circles between the two when your air conditioner is running. And as I mentioned previously, this is an upflow furnace, which means that air, your return air, comes into the side of your furnace and it gets pushed out through the top. There's also downflow furnaces. A downflow furnace will have this refrigerant coil called an evaporator coil. On a downflow furnace, that coil will be below the furnace. And then there's also the horizontal furnaces, which are mounted horizontally, usually in crawl spaces or attic units. And in that case, the coil will be either on the left or the right side. You'll have your power coming in. It'll either be a steel cable, you know, with the rigid cable, or it'll be solid like mine. A lot of times there'll be a power switch either right at the furnace. Mine's off right now because I don't want it to run while I'm talking. Or this switch will be further down, like at the wall, somewhere behind the furnace. Usually if you trace the metal cable that's running from your furnace, just track it down usually you will be able to find where that switch is. Once in a while, there is no power switch. In that case, you would need to just turn off your circuit breaker to turn off the power to the furnace. And of course, all gas and propane furnaces will have a gas supply line, which will be black iron or copper. And I know somebody's gonna definitely say that copper is not code. Where I live, currently, copper is still code. And even though a lot of places have already disallowed that, or it's not by code, here in Minnesota, I bought this house two years ago and this did pass the inspection and there was no problems with it. So maybe later on, they're gonna update the codes in Minnesota, but as far as I know, this is still okay. So basically the gas piping will also come into the furnace. And another thing you should know about your furnace is how to take off your furnace doors. A lot of times there'll be a handle on the top door. One way or another, figure out how to take it out. On this particular one, you have to press up and pull out. Mine's an American Standard, which is the same thing as train. And on a lot of train furnaces, just so you know, you have to take the bottom door off first, and then you can take the top off. 
Sometimes they'll have knobs, sometimes the doors will be screwed in, but in order to access anything inside of the furnace, you do have to take the doors off. And just a fair warning, sometimes those doors are actually pretty hard to put back in. So as you're taking them out, I would pay attention if it's your first time taking the doors off. Pay attention to how you're taking them off because putting them back on might be a struggle. And for the bottom door in mine, I just pull it up. Usually kind of wiggling it as you're taking it out helps. And the bottom door comes off too. I am down in my furnace quite a bit, so my wires are a mess. Uh, usually I would zip tie them just so it looks more clean. But on mine, since I'm in here quite a bit, I just leave them like that. And another thing I want to point out is the door switch. The door switch will typically always be on the bottom, on the lower door. The door switch will either be in the middle, on the left or the right. And what this is, is basically a secondary power switch. Like the power switch we looked at earlier. And all this does is when you take that bottom door off, this door switch usually pops up and disables the power to the furnace. That way if a homeowner's, you know, starts sticking his hands into the control board and stuff, he's not gonna get shocked. And like I mentioned previously, I open up my furnace quite a bit for various videos. So I just have my power switch taped shut. That way the power does not get disconnected when I take the bottom door off. That way I can check voltages and do different checks on my furnace with the furnace on. Now I don't want to spend any more time on the components of the furnace. I do have a separate video where I talk about every part of the furnace and its functions and how it works. I also have another video called the furnace sequence of operation where I explain how each component turns on in what order what gets energized, how it works, what it does. So if you're interested in how all these innards work, check out those other videos for more information on that. But let's get back to the actual furnace maintenance tips. Okay, so now that we're done with the furnace overview, furnace maintenance tip number one is to change your filter regularly. As simple as that sounds, um, the number two furnace problem, I have a video where I have the top 10 furnace problems, the number, ten, number two problem is a dirty furnace filter where the furnace stops working or is not working correctly because the furnace filter is too dirty. So make sure you change your filters regularly. Um, just so you know, they are directional. A lot of times if you have these pleated filters, the accordion style, they will have a net on one side and no net on the other. There's different styles of filters, but this is a fairly common one. And a lot of times they'll also have an arrow on the filter it says airflow that way. Basically, long story short, the airflow needs to go towards the furnace or the arrow is supposed to be pointing towards the blower motor in your furnace. So in my case, it would be this way. A lot of times the furnace filter will be on one side of the furnace, either left or right, in the return duct. And other times, you know, it's not as frequent, but it'll be inside the actual furnace as well. You have to take the bottom door off to find that filter. As for how frequently filters should be changed, if you have a one inch filter like that, I know that a lot of them will say that they last three months, but really the only time they're lasting three months is in the fall when you're not really using your air conditioner or your furnace or you're barely using them. In those cases, of course, your furnace filter is going to last longer. But if it's negative 30 degrees outside and your furnace is running all the time, your filter is going to get plugged up in like three or four weeks. So if you pull out your filter and it looks like that, instead of a nice white color like this, then you know it's dirty. And also, I pointed this one out as a clean example, but it's actually not clean. Even though it's white, there's like a white powder over this filter. And this is actually a very plugged filter. My furnace was overheating with this filter in there. And you can kind of tell how this filter is caved in. That's because the furnace was straining for air, so it was really pulling this filter in because the blower motor was having a hard time trying to suck the air through this filter. Another indicator is if your furnace is whistling, making whistling sounds, and right when you take that furnace filter out, everything stops, that's a good indication that that filter is dirty as well. So in general, you should be replacing one inch filters every month or two. And furnace tip number two is duct cleaning. Now this is the most important when you have some kind of a home renovation going on. If you're remodeling your kitchen or something, especially if you're doing sheetrock, flooring, carpeting that will get your ducts really dirty especially the coil that sits on top of the furnace and if on top of that you're not replacing your filter as regularly as you should that coil is going to start to get dirty so unfortunately duct cleaning is not something you could do yourself you do have to hire duct cleaners 
But a few pointers on that. If you're doing some kind of a remodeling, make sure you're replacing your filter a lot more frequently because that will get dirty a lot faster. And after you're done with all the remodeling, we do recommend getting your ducts cleaned. And the most important part about that is to get your coil cleaned, the evaporator coil or the A-coil that's part of the air conditioner. Operationally, the coil is the most important part. The ductwork does not matter as much as the coil itself. So if you do hire some duct cleaners, make sure you ask them to clean the coil along with all the ducts. And one last note about the duct cleaning, after they clean your ducts, all the dust and debris that they stir up, usually they never suck all that stuff out. So after the duct cleaning, your filter will get dirty a lot faster than it normally would. So if you just replaced your filter and got your ducts cleaned, keep in mind that you may have to replace it like a week later or your furnace is going to start to overheat. And maintenance tip number three is to keep your return grills always open and not blocked by anything and to keep most of your supply registers opened up as well. I know some people like to close off the supply registers like in the basement for example or in the upstairs room because it gets too hot. So the rule of thumb for that is you don't want to close off more than one third of all the supplies in your house. So if you have let's say 21 registers, seven is the absolute maximum that you should be closing. But really, optimally, you should keep them all open. As for return grills, they're usually bigger and returns, the ones that are sucking air in, they will never have shutoffs on them. You can't close a return grill. And one thing to watch for is that you don't have any couches or shelves in front of those return grills so nothing is blocking them because they're sucking the air in. If you have some of those return grills blocked, then your furnace will overheat as well. So make sure they're open and they're clean. If your registers have a lot of dust and you can see just dust caking them, then get a vacuum cleaner and just vacuum it all out. If you look inside and you can see that it's all really hairy and dusty in there too, you could just take the screws out that hold that return grill, vacuum there too, and if you look down and it looks really scary, then you might need to hire some duct cleaners. And maintenance tip number four is the thermostat. A lot of thermostats will have batteries and a lot of customers won't be aware that that thermostat has batteries. Now, usually there will be a low battery symbol that appears, but unfortunately most people will miss that little notification until their furnace stops heating. Or in other times, when the batteries get weak, that low battery symbol doesn't always appear before you start having problems. So a good thing to do is to just check out your thermostat, pull it off the wall, see if it has any kind of batteries. They're usually double A's or triple A's. And also, if you have a programmable thermostat, learn how that programming works. Because if your thermostat accidentally gets bumped into the program mode instead of the manual hold, your temperatures can be jumping around all over the place. All of a sudden your thermostat setting will go down to 62 and then back up to 68. I get furnace repair calls like that at least a couple times a year where the program in the background is messing with the customer as it's jumping back and forth. So even if you don't like to use the programming feature on your thermostat, I would still learn it just so you're aware of how it works so if something like that does start happening you'll be able to realize what's going on. And if you need more info on how to program a thermostat I have a whole video where I talk about how to program the thermostat and I go over all the features and functions so you can check that video out if you need it. And maintenance tip number five is the humidifier. Not everybody will have a whole house humidifier but there is quite a few furnaces out there that do have them and the only thing you should be aware of about the humidifier is replacing the water panel. Most of the covers will come off pretty easy, especially if you have an April air. If not, I mean, there might be a, like a screw holding it, but for the most part, they do come off pretty easy. This water panel, if you use your humidifier, this will get dirty. If you press on it and your finger just crumbles right through it, that means you should replace that water panel. Usually this frame will stay, the top comes off and this panel slides out. You can slide a new one in and you're good to go. So let's put this back on. That's the water panel. It's basically the filter for the humidifier. And most humidifiers will also have a damper. These April airs, they have a damper right on the side. Um, other humidifiers will have a damper built in the little round duct further down the line. But this damper basically closes the air supply to the humidifier, opens and closes the air supply. So on mine, it conveniently says summer, winter, summer. But basically all you're doing is in the winter, when you use your humidifier, you want that little duct to be open. In the summer, when you're not using the humidifier, you want this damper to be closed.
And if you do have a humidifier, also be aware of where your humidifier control is or the humidistan. In my case, mine is just mounted right up top onto my return duct. And right now it's set to off. So once again, in the winter, you want this thing to be on. In the summer, you want it to be off or at least on if you're gonna be using it. And a quick note on that, it has a bunch of numbers. Usually it'll go from like 50 to 10. You can turn it up as high as you want. Of course, the higher you're setting it, the more humidity to the point where if your windows are fogging up, that means you have too much humidity. So you can turn it up as high as you want until your windows start to fog. If they're fogging up, like you wake up in the morning and your windows are all watery, then you have it set too high. You wanna turn that down. For most people, the comfort level is about 35-40%. And maintenance tip number six is the carbon monoxide detector. In most states, by code, you should have a CO detector or a carbon monoxide detector on every single living floor of your house. No more than 10 feet away from bedrooms where people sleep. There's standalone carbon monoxide detectors and there's also the duals where it's a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector in one. And usually if you just read them, if you put like a chair underneath it and look up, usually it'll say carbon monoxide somewhere on there if you have a dual one. Otherwise you can buy them at like Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever home improvement stores you have in your area, or you can even get them on Amazon. I'll put a link in my description to a carbon monoxide detector that you can get on Amazon if you wanna shop on there. I personally like the ones that have a digital display on them so you can see like a live reading of what the carbon monoxide reading in your house is because most carbon monoxide detectors, they're only gonna sound an alarm if there's 50 parts per million carbon monoxide in your home already, which at those levels, you're probably already gonna to start to feel a little bit dizzy and maybe even nauseous. So I like to have a little display and that display should always be zero. So whenever you're walking by it, you should always see a zero there. And one last note about the carbon monoxide detectors, fire departments recommend replacing the CO detectors every five to seven years. Now, even if you have batteries on them, replacing the batteries does not help because the actual carbon monoxide sensor inside of those little detectors, those are the sensors that fail. That's why they recommend replacing them every five to seven years. So if your detectors are over seven years old, then you should probably consider getting some new detectors in your house because carbon monoxide is a deadly gas and could be fatal if the worst were to happen. And maintenance tip number seven is that every homeowner should know where their power and gas shut off from their furnace is. So as I mentioned previously, you know, where you have the cord going to your furnace, if you look on the sides of your furnace, on this side, I have absolutely nothing. And on this other side, I have the junction box or the power switch. And if you don't see a power switch at the side of your furnace, then just follow the cable that comes out the side of your furnace. It'll either be a rigid cable or a solid one like this. Just follow it where it goes, and a lot of times this power switch will be wherever that cable is going. I had a furnace repair order just today where this power switch was on this side of the furnace, and as the customer was replacing their filter, they bumped that off, and their furnace wasn't working all day simply because the power switch was accidentally bumped off. So all I had to do was just turn that back on, and their furnace fired right back on. And this here, mounted to my junction box, is a transformer from my humidifier. Most people will not have that there. Usually the junction box is just a standalone box like that with a power switch. So that turns off the electricity to the furnace, or of course you can just turn off the breaker going to your furnace. And here is the gas supply line shut off right here. Now mine is conveniently right next to my furnace. If it's a ball valve, what you have to remember about these valves is if it makes a cross, that means that's off. And if it goes with the pipe, that means the gas supply is on. Now the shutoff valve will not always be this close to the furnace. And if yours is not, just follow the piping coming from your gas valve and going outside the furnace. And just like the power cable, just track down the piping, follow it and find out where the shutoff is. By code, every furnace should have some kind of a shutoff in the gas piping going to the furnace. And there's also an on off switch on every single gas valve in a furnace as well. So on mine, it's right here. It's just a little switch. Usually they are pretty tiny switches. It says on right here, off right here. And you can actually turn off the gas supply to the furnace just by turning that gas valve off as well. And furnace tip number eight involves only high efficiency furnaces. So if you have the plastic PVC exhaust pipe and intake pipe, a good thing to check for is to go outside where those pipes go out the side of your house and make sure that those pipes are not covered in snow. 
especially if you live in an area like Minnesota where we get a lot of snow. I see a lot of times those pipes get covered by snow. And of course, if the exhaust and intake are covered by snow, then your furnace is gonna stop working. So make sure the area underneath those pipes is shoveled so the snow is not getting too high. Also, the exhaust pipe creates condensation. The exhaust fumes coming out have a lot of moisture in them. So an icicle usually starts to grow on the bottom of the exhaust pipe. And sometimes they get really big. And if they reach the exhaust pipe, they start to build up and start closing off that exhaust pipe as well. So if you see a big icicle in the bottom of your exhaust pipe, I would just knock that off so it doesn't bring you problems later on. So that's the outside portion. As for the inside, where that intake pipe comes in, there's usually gonna be a burner box. It'll be sealed off. It'll have like a cover door with about six or eight screws holding it on. You can just take all those screws out and you can take that burner door off. If you haven't taken it off in a long time, it can be pretty hard to pry off. But if you take that off, a lot of times that intake pipe will suck in stuff from outside like grass, bugs, and leaves. That stuff will start to settle inside of your burner box. You can just take a vacuum cleaner and maybe a brush and just get all that stuff out of there. And just your furnace as well. If there's dust and debris inside there, you can just clean and vacuum all that up so there's not a lot of stuff inside of your furnace like dust and other kinds of debris. And maintenance tip number nine is to open up your furnace doors and just inspect your furnace for any kind of leaks any kind of water leaks. So if you're seeing any rust buildup, especially if you're seeing fresh water, try to figure out where that water is coming from. This will mostly pertain to high efficiency furnaces that condense or create water. My furnace, an 80% furnace like this with the steel vent, they do not create water. So the only time any water can leak over them is if the air conditioner is working and for some reason something is leaking from the air conditioner. But anyways, check your furnace out for any leaks. If you see any fresh water, Try to figure out where it's coming from and get that fixed. And maintenance tip number 10 is occasionally, every couple years, cleaning the flame sensor. I have a video of top 10 furnace problems and a dirty flame sensor happens to be the number one furnace problem. So periodically cleaning it will prevent it from causing you trouble down the road. Now the flame sensor, before I take it out, I just want to show you. On most furnaces, many of the modern furnaces will have a hot surface igniter. The igniter we'll have two wires going to it, two white wires like, like this going to it, whereas the flame sensor will only have one white wire going to it. So that's an easy way to tell on which side the flame sensor is. Or you can just look back there and try to find the metal rod. I'll take mine out so you can see what it looks like. And of course, when you're doing this, you wanna have the furnace power switch off. Mine was off this whole time, so that's why I was freely taking off all my doors and everything. Usually it's gonna be just one quarter inch screw holding the flame sensor in. Sometimes it'll be a Phillips. You take that screw out and just wiggle that flame sensor out. You might have to turn it in different directions. And that's what the flame sensor looks like. It's just a metal rod. Sometimes it'll be a straight rod. It's different shapes. They can be long or short. As you can see, mine has some carbon buildup from the flames. And also, 80% furnaces, they suck air in from the front. So there will be dust and other debris that settles on here. If you have a drying machine or a kitty litter box that's close to your furnace, your flame sensor will get dirty a lot faster as well. And cleaning the flame sensor is actually very easy. All you need is like a dishwasher scrubby, a scotch Bright pad. It's not recommended to use sandpaper on them. You don't want to scratch it because then it seems like the dust settles on it a lot faster than it normally would. So you just take a scotch Bright pad or whatever it is that you're using, some kind of a scrubby, any kind of a scrubby pad should work. The main part is to just grip the flame sensor rod real tight. If you're just lightly brushing it, you're not gonna get much stuff off. You have to actually press down on it pretty firm. Press down and just polish it up. Make sure you twist the scrubby pad so you get all the sides. There you go. As you can see, none of that green stuff is on there anymore. I scrubbed it all off. So now this flame sensor will not give me any trouble for the next couple of years. So that was a brief demonstration on how to clean the flame sensor and where it is. I do have a whole nother video which is solely on the flame sensor. So if you want more info on flame sensors, you can check that one out. And then just make sure you put it back in place. Usually there's only one screw hole, so you can't really put this thing in wrong. 
So it's the most common furnace problem, but also happens to be the easiest furnace problem to fix as well. And that is it. Those were the 10 furnace maintenance tips that I had for you. And as a bonus, I also want to mention that most furnaces, the owner's manual, if you happen to have that book from your furnace still, those owner manuals will actually have a maintenance checklist provided in that manual of things that you can check in your furnaces. Usually it will look like this. And some of the stuff on this list, you have to be a service technician to be able to check that, like checking and adjusting the gas pressure, for example. But many of the things on this list, a homeowner can check and do themselves. Now, if you have no idea where your owner's manual is, just so you know, most of the major manufacturers, you know, like Carrier, Bryant, Lennox, Train, a lot of those manufacturers will actually have owner's manuals online that you could look up. So if you get the model number of your furnace, which is usually gonna be somewhere on the inside of your furnace cabinet or in the back of your furnace door. And just go to Google and type in carrier, the model number, owner's manual. You should be able to find that manual online. But most of those checklists are pretty similar. So if you wanted to, you could just take a little screenshot of the checklist that I showed you a little previously, and that'll do just as good. Well guys, and that is all I had for you today. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any other tips or suggestions, some other kind of maintenance that a homeowner can do on their furnace themselves, please do add them in the comments below. And if you're watching this video because your furnace is not working, I do have a lot of furnace repair videos. I'll go ahead and put a link in my description for my furnace repair video playlist. I have a lot of videos that could help you fix your furnace. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. Impressed? I would be too. But then again, if you stretched every day like I do, then you would be able to do this too. <laughs>